Welcome to this update for SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 in Thailand for February 22nd, 2020. In today's video, I want to talk about the report from Imperial College of London that estimates how many of the COVID-19 cases from Wuhan have traveled internationally without detection. Uh, my own estimate of the real number of COVID-19 cases currently in Thailand, as well as Thailand's response to the outbreak. Now, this was a preprint and it's not been peer reviewed, but what it looks at is the typical number of flights as recorded in 2018 from the high risk areas of China and where they went to. And based on that, they were able to assess which countries and cities were most at risk for the spread of coronavirus. What they found is that China or that Thailand is number one. We also see Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and South Korea at the top. And those countries have been exactly the ones that have recorded the most cases outside of China. Remember, this report was uh, written uh, about two weeks ago. Now, at the time of the paper, which was, like I said, two weeks ago, you could see that the number of cases, which is on the y-axis at that time, correlated well with their estimated risk. Uh, on the x-axis. However, Thailand is the outlier. In Thailand, we see that the number of cases they detected and reported is less than what you would expect, expect based on this analysis. And I'm going to bring up another brand new study that comes to the same conclusion. I'll talk about how I've tried to estimate the real number of COVID-19 cases in Thailand. The bottom line is it's possible that Thailand has missed a lot of cases. So let's look at this new report. It comes out of the Imperial College of London. It was just released yesterday and it tries to estimate how sensitive screening and detection has been in various countries. What they did was look at the actual number of people who traveled from infected areas of China and compared that to the number of cases of Chinese travelers that had been detected in those countries with uh, detected with the virus. What you see is that the cases of infected Chinese travelers that have been detected in the in these countries on the y-axis correlates pretty well with the air traffic from Wuhan on the x-axis. Based on their analysis and the assumption that countries like Singapore have been pretty good at detecting infected Chinese travelers, they estimated how many cases of COVID-19 should have been detected in those Chinese travelers. What we see is that this country out here had many less cases detected on the x-axis than what we would expect based on the number of people in, from Wuhan that came there, which is on the y-axis. And can you guess what country that is? Yes, this is Thailand. Now they don't highlight in the report, but based on the numbers in the table that they do provide, we can deduce that this is Thailand. So again, another analysis indicates that Thailand may have missed many infections and the real number of COVID-19 cases would be expected to be higher than what's reported. Let's look at the latest numbers in the Ministry of Public Health. It's in Thai, sorry about that, but the ministry usually has about a one day delay in putting out the English version of their update. What we see is that they've tracked a total of 1,151 patients whom they consider as possible or suspected cases, what's called a person under investigation. And that could be any flu-like symptom with some reason to suspect it could have been caused by SARS-CoV-2. What we see is that 210 are currently in hospital while 939 have been discharged back home. And these are cumulative numbers going back to about mid-January. Now, I've been keeping track of this data and I'm putting it into a spreadsheet. And what we see here in the blue line are the actual number of people currently ill, the actual persons under an investigation uh, that are still in hospital. And we see that recently has started going up sharply. Only a few days ago, the number of hospitalized patients was down below 100. We had seen high numbers of cases in late January, early February, where hospitalized PUIs were up around 400, which was mostly related to the Chinese travelers and also an outbreak of influenza A. But we're seeing now a second round of people that are being investigated for COVID-19. Part of this recent increase can be attributed to increased surveillance in key provinces across the country, which was reported in the Bangkok Post yesterday. However, I think what's key in the government statement is that they acknowledge they may have missed a number of cases and that even the ministry finds it suspicious that the number of confirmed cases has sat steady at 35 for many days now. The new screening method, the article says, was introduced after the ministry became concerned 
about the effectiveness of previous screening. So again, the jump in persons under investigation is partly due to a wider net being cast to try to identify cases, but I think it's also an indication that we may see the number of confirmed cases in Thailand jump soon. I've actually been doing some estimates of the number of COVID-19 cases in Thailand, um, just an estimate, but trying to make some reasonable assumptions based on the information provided. So if we jump back to that graph from before, we can see my estimate for currently ill people that may actually be sick with COVID-19. This is in the black line. By my estimate, we may have around 80 COVID-19 patients currently sick in Thailand, and the cumulative total of patients, including those that have already recovered, may be around 200 or more. Of course, having around 200 cases would be much closer to what we see in South Korea and Japan, which again would put it in line with the estimates of risk that say Thailand should be similar to those two countries. You might ask how I came to this estimate. It goes back to the first three weeks of data that the Ministry of Public Health had put out. At that time, they would report the final diagnoses of patients under investigation. And from that data, it showed that about 20% of all persons under investigation ended up testing positive for the coronavirus. Unfortunately, the ministry did stop reporting that detail in its daily updates. So now we have no insight into how many tests have actually been completed. I think one reason they stopped reporting that was it didn't look good that they had over 400 tests still pending results as of February 2nd, which was the last time they gave that information. And they were showing ability to complete less than 10 tests each day. So if we assume that that 20% ratio still holds true, that is that 20% of persons under investigation are actually positive for COVID-19, um, which isn't too unreasonable. The other 80% we know from the data had influenza A or B mostly or some other respiratory disease. Now with that assumption, I could estimate the number of new COVID-19 cases each day. I was able to estimate how fast they were recovering also from the ministry data and together I was able to come up with this line in black that shows active COVID-19 cases in Thailand. Again, it's just an estimate and many assumptions are built into it, but without the transparency from the ministry about how many tests have been completed and doubt being cast on the screening measures, I don't think it's too far fetched of an estimate. Let's finish with the latest efforts by the Thai government. The government revealed that it has prepared a worst case plan to handle a widespread outbreak. The plan includes shutting down schools, canceling events and setting up military field hospitals should the situation reach so-called phase three which they describe as having 1,000 cases per day uh, and deaths occurring. So that's it for now. Stay tuned for future updates as more information becomes available.